In this vlog of my adventure in Mannheim and Karlsruhe, you're gonna find me staring at a pretzel, striking up a chat with some locals, and counting up the 32 streets radiating from the same point in the castle. So what are you waiting for? Let's hit the like button and begin our adventure. First, we need to get to Germany. So I hopped onto my flight in Krakow after I finished all of the exploration in Poland this time. And quickly, I was approaching Germany. And waiting for me there is not only sausages and potatoes. I have a good old friend to go on the adventure with. Herzlich willkommen in Mannheim. We welcome to Mannheim, Germany. This is my next stop. And for the morning, uh, my friend Betty will actually take me to some very special activity that I'm sure not gonna suck at. After paying the membership fee, donned my climbing sneakers, and realizing what kind of mess I have got myself into in Germany, I decided to be the cameraman for Betty and her friend Pascal first. While I am 94.8% potato, both in the shape department and the content department, these two active Germans are way more agile and stronger than I would ever dream to be. And rock climbing seemed to be so easy when they are doing it. While I was beginning to learn that each different color represents a different kind of difficulty level, they were already monkey barring through all of the rocks precariously hanging at the edge of inclines. And that especially applied to Pascal who was extremely strong in the upper body and was able to pull himself up like gravity is merely a suggestion. Meanwhile for Betty, her agile little body also helped her tremendously to swing between the different colored rocks that are spaced apart more than an arm's reach. Meanwhile for me, that is a different kind of story. After struggling for so long even attempting the second easiest level, I decided to take on the final tackle on this course. This is not because I'm the one who seeks improvement and want to exercise more so I can live a healthier lifestyle. No, 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 no. But this is because I'm Asian and I want to get at least a partial value of my entrance fee. No way I'm gonna pay this much and just watch people doing the cool things. Done it! Yeah! After bidding farewell to Betty and her friend Pascal because uh, they have to go to the university for classes. Can you imagine that? Just giving up, not giving up your future and just travel forever and actually go and study? Like, <laughs> like who wants to be an engineer anyway, right? Right? Oh, yeah, but back on topic. I'm here because uh, I'm now in the city center of Mannheim and it is time for lunch. And uh, you know, in Germany, you gotta do what the Germans do. When you're busy, tired, and want to have a big lunch for not much of a price, you go for a duna. Yeah, a duna is a German, German version of uh, the Turkish kebab, and it's way better, way cheaper, and honestly, way more worth it. Let's go check it out. Huh? Okay, so I actually got the most deluxe version. It's literally called duna teller, so plate, uh, deluxe, right? So you can see it's this big of a plate. And it's actually not a good deal. <laughs> yeah, but I I'm just hungry. I want to eat more, okay? Actually, the most basic version is just a duna. Uh, it's just a pita bread, and inside has basically half of these stuff. And then what you get is like ridiculous value because it's four euros fifty, while this one is like thirteen euros. But this one has all the you know bourgeoisie uh, pimped out stuff like uh, avocado, and then like extra fries and extra cheese and cottage cheese and things like that. You don't actually need them. One minute, 37 seconds later. And while I'm eating lunch, I get to meet a new friend. Hi! Servus! I'm Freaky! 
Welcome to Mannheim. <laughs> yeah, he's freaky. Be careful about that. <laughs> While I was chatting with this friendly local, I couldn't help but think how great of an experience I was having. Germans are known to be aloof and serious, but throughout my years of my travel here in Germany, it is almost never the case if you get to even know them one bit. And I found that especially true in Mannheim, where there is almost no tourist presence. And let's not forget, I was visiting at the lowest season of the low. And this is why I like Germany, because after almost a dozen times visiting this country, I am almost accepted as one of their own, even though I have a lot of complaints about the Mannheim system of naming their blocks. Oh, you can check out that quirky video on the top right corner. Well, after packing up the leftovers, you know, it's not a dinner experience if you can finish them all. I'm now at the market square. Oh, it's really nice. Uh, people are packing up for the day. And uh, yeah, all the fresh fruits and veggies in the back. There's a meat shop. Uh, there's quite a lot of uh, dairy products and other stalls. Oh, it's nice. Yeah. But uh, I'm here a bit too late, I guess. But look at this beautiful market hall. And this is the city landmark of Mannheim. Yeah, beautiful, right? One of the most beautiful architecture of Art Nouveau style in the entire country. It's called Wasserturm, literally means water tower. Well, how does it come to be? It actually has a very, very interesting story. Well, you can see that Mannheim is situated next to the Neckar River. And that means the water table is really, really high. That means you just don't need to drill too high so you can get water, right? That's actually a bad thing because the water doesn't get too many opportunities to filter through the soil. So literally, the well water is hot garbage. So the city's uh, citizens have been asking for a cleaner, more reliable source of water for a long time. And in the 1700s, uh, the city government finally decided, you know what, we're going to try to find a way to get the water from um, Heidelberg on the other side where there are more mountains so they can channel the mountain water here. And uh, we're going to build a lot of fountains. Remember, before the days of um, tap water, fountains is like one of the most reliable ways for the citizens to get their fresh water. So they built almost like 30, 40 and eventually to 120 fountains. But the problem is that <laughs> by the time they're all finished, there was no water because the project has been cancelled and redesigned dozens of times. And then finally, they decided to come up with this. The plan is to basically have um, a water tower that can uh, constantly channel water from um, higher up in Heidelberg. And then it provides enough water pressure so it can be delivered to basically every corner of the city. It took them 60 years to come up with this. So all of the fountains sat empty for basically the better half of the century. After enjoying a nice, large and buttery pretzel, as the local tradition demanded, and also because of the fact that if I do not try one here in southwest Germany, I would be prohibited from leaving the country altogether per German national law. I explored the city a little bit more just to watch the trams go by their ways. Well, of course, Betty also took me to a nice Italian restaurant for dinner. But that is the least of my focus here in Germany. What I was looking for is my dessert. Okay, so for dessert, I got something really, really special, okay? For a lot of you guys don't know, there's this thing called a spaghetti eyes in Germany. You look at this, you see? It looks like spaghetti, right? Like, it's all noodles, right? It's very noodly, you see? And then, you know, you see, you even have this bread, the sauce that's like tomato sauce, and then, you know, all of this, you know, it's for cheese, right? Yeah, but it's actually ice cream. <laughs> Some random immigrant from Northern Italy came up with this in my home, right here, uh, about 60, 70 years ago. So yeah, this is like something that's very, very famous local specialty that has spread all around Germany. But sadly, it has not gained popularity anywhere else. So yeah, cheers. That's not spaghetti at all. After slurping down all of these frozen spaghetti, it was time for me to move on to my next destination, Karlsruhe. Mannheim is mostly a student city, and besides pestering my friends, I really don't have too much to do. So I figured it would be better for me to hop on this train and pester a complete different city instead. Watch out, the Asian menace is coming. He is here to eat all of your rice.
After walking around and checking out some of the bigger sites, I ended up in the market square right in front of the city hall. Normally, there will be a large flea market taking place on this Sunday, since the city is consisted of almost all young university students. But on this gloomy November day, the merchants were setting up for one last step before opening up the magnificent and traditional Christmas market. This is one of my favorite features that is offered in the German-speaking world, as Christmas lights, traditional German music, and our large mug of mulled wine can never go better together than here in Germany. And let's not forget, they have been lighting up the darkest days in the year for more than 1,000 years straight. Oh hey, look at this! Isn't this so pretty? Oh, right. Um, it's actually the future skating ring of the Christmas market. I mean, the other side. Ta-da! This is the famous Karlsruhe Castle. It actually has quite a history. So the entire city of Karlsruhe actually owes its existence to a tiny dispute between the Margrave of baden Durlach and his citizens. So basically, he had his uh, capital set up in the Durlach, and then he wanted to, you know, try to do a little bit more, right? But then, you know, the citizen just said, nah, we're not gonna let you do that. And that angered him so that he just said, you know what, I'm gonna set up a new city. And then he built this in the early 18th century. So this was technically finished in 1715 and as the new seat uh, of his power, basically. And uh, a new city is supposed to radiate out from this castle all the way to the rest uh, of the region. And if you look at the map, you're gonna see it clearly that this is the center that they plan now. And there's actually 32 streets that radiate directly from the palace to basically every single corner of the city. <laughs> I'm now at the top of the tower and I can explain to you how they divide it into 32 lines much easier because now I'm at the center of everything and that is where you know every single street is supposed to leave from right so uh, the city completely is designed this way so it's called like the fan city but um, now some of the streets have already been covered or redesigned but a lot of the original 32 lines you can still see them here for example right right here in the middle here that's a main one, of course. Everyone see that. You can see all the way to Marx Platz and all the way down there. And then you can see down here is another one, right? So let's count it, right? All the way from here. So there's one here. And if you turn a little bit, see here's another street. 12.5 degrees. Another one. And here, you can't see it properly, but there's actually, you can see the street that goes all the way down there. And then, of course, this one. And then this one, right? So for each quarter, it's about four streets. And now we continue here. You can see there's one street here, and another one here, and then another one here, and then another one here. Here, this one is covered, but there's another one in the backside past this building. This one's completely gone, and then here. So within each quarter, from here all the way here, there should be eight streets in order to make it 32. And that was pretty ambitious. So the city of Karlsruhe, besides being the home of basically the German's equivalent of MIT, which is called KIT by the way, um, it's also home to two of the most important courts in the entire country. So for example, this one is actually the, um, the Federal Constitutional Court of Germany. So I think they are more uh, about the constitution of the country. And uh, yeah, this is actually the highest court uh, in its domain. So yeah, it's really, really important. And the other court is also the highest in its domain. So actually they call it uh, the city of law for a reason. And uh, just to give you an idea, uh, this court is called Bundeswehrfassungsgericht. All one word, by the way. Sex. Sex. Sexo. Sexo. Geschlechtsverkehr.
Fearing that a German girl will come to me and ask for Geschlechtsverkehr, I decided it was time for me to hightail out of here. So a quick local S-Bahn ride coupled with a bus ride that meanders through local industrial parks, I was eventually dropped at the Baden-Baden FKB airport. And let's begin my journey in Croatia, where they at least do not call a nipple Brustwarze. But despite all of that, I really really enjoy my time here in Germany. There's a reason why this is my most visited European country, and I truly believe if I need to settle down somewhere, this will be the country I want to be in. The friendly locals and the interesting history will keep me entertained for the rest of my lifetime. I really hope to enjoy this adventure here in Germany and don't forget to click the like button as it will help me a lot. And subscribe if you want to follow me down to the capital of Croatia. And here, check out the next part of perhaps the trip playlist. And if you want something interesting, this is the sister episode describing the weird numbering system of Meinheim streets. And I will see you around. Now that is a cool livery. Look at that scorpion. Mine? Oh. Not so much. <laughs>